Good afternoon, Reverend Jackson. It's yes. nice to see you here today. Good to see you again. It's, it's always nice to see you, and thank you for taking time out of your bit busy schedule. Today we were got, wanted to take a few minutes of your time to talk about building a sane, healthy, just, and peaceful society by focusing in on the work of mental <coughs> health professionals. Now, I remember just a few years back when you were at the American Psychological Association making a presentation about what counselors can do, what psychologists can do, what social workers can do. And you referenced Dr. King's speech earlier in the 60s at the same convention. You know, we have been, we have been critically uh, identified as uh, handmaidens of the status quo, helping people with depression, anxiety, and stress learn to cope to get back to toxic conditions, unjust conditions. We have started a small group of counselors called Counselors for Social Justice. There's a great deal of resistance in the profession to work openly and with courage. I wonder what some of your thoughts are in terms of the role of mental health professionals. Well, you know, <clears throat> we react to blood and physical conditions, but often mental challenges, unresolved conflict cannot be seen as easily. We just miss people that's crazy. Well, they're not crazy. They have unresolved conflict. They cannot figure it out. They cannot rationalize. They don't have the mental cushion or dexterity, as the case may be. And because we take it so light, there's so many people in jail who should be in hospital, me on the streets who should be in the hospitals. Good kind of jail has maybe 10,000 inmates, but 4,500 are mentally challenged with on heavy medicine every day. And and there's no place for them when they come out. So they either go back or get in trouble while they, and they go back again. So we must, as a society, begin to take signs of stress and depression and anxiety and know that it is a, it is a challenge and it deserves love and care. There's an effort to promote community service learning for children and for adolescents. So they go into the community and do many of the things that Rainbow Push Coalition has done for a long period of time and that is to help feed the hungry, to work with prison inmates. Uh, um, what do you think about a movement to engage in the activities under, as, as mental well, health it, professionals? It, it, it must start early on. Many of what we call bad children are traumatized children who are acting out what they've seen and you listen to them, they, they speak the language of their parents. They speak the language of the streets, they act out the language of the streets, and they, they do not very well fit in a classroom setting because they are traumatized. Another way of putting it, Doctor, there are no veterans who are not wounded. All veterans are wounded. Some have been hit with a bullet, a shrapnel. Some have seen a, a friend hit with shrapnel. Some have seen somebody beheaded. Some have been feared it may happen to them, but all veterans deserve care and treatment. All veterans are wounded. And that's true of all civil rights veterans. I was at a meeting in uh, Houston not long ago, and when the soldiers walked in uh, in their uniforms and everybody got their attention, we respect our soldiers because they, they marched for our freedom. Those soldiers didn't march for our freedom. Those who marched for our freedom were, were street fighters. They didn't have a, they, they, they were demonstrators. Those are people who brought down the public accommodations and secured the right to vote for open housing. Those who fought for justice, they were not uniform soldiers, but they were traumatized and, and mentally challenged and they deserve understanding and care. So I often say it's that people uh, care that you know, but they must know that you care, and we must care. The work that you and Rainbow Push have done over the decades is really caught by a spirit of courage to be able to confront the injustices and yet in the mental health professionals people put their careers first and hold back on taking courageous stands. What would your message be to health care providers, mental health care providers, who know the environment impacts in adverse ways minorities, gay and lesbian? They, they must go very public in protesting and wants to detect the problem. Because we often find out the result of it may be mass shootings uh, or some problem because somebody cannot resolve their disturbance. And that becomes our challenge, at least document it, recognize it, and then do something about it. 
our society, again, there's the emergency room in every hospital, somebody who's bleeding physically, but not somebody who is bleeding and brooding mentally, and that, and that's, and that is a greater number. I appreciate your time, Reverend. Now, As we say from you, Hawaii, aloha to you and your family. And aloha to you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Good take care. I'm glad to see you, buddy. Thank you for taking the time, Reverend. I really appreciate it.